Hi, see, this is summer 1st, 2015, and I thought I would bring a little guest along with me today. This is my husband's at, and today's going to be a little different from my normal vlog, which you guess has been seeing the reviews of products and um, me having subscription boxes and food and just little things about uh, bipolar stuff. But today's going to be like what it is like to be married to someone who is bipolar. Um, we both have different versions of it. I am bipolar 1, he is bipolar 2. So, um, what I'd really like to explore is like some of the things that he observes that I do that maybe I'm not aware of or that um, you may observe in your own partner that um, you could definitely relate to on that kind of level and relationship wise. So, without further ado, um, hi husband. <laughs> This entire video is a trap. Don't fall for it. I would like to know what kind of behaviors that I do that you recognize when I'm going through either a manic phase or a depressive phase. <laughs> That's not a behavior. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> well, normally she's very very attentive about how she keeps the house clean and when she's going through a phase which kind of phase? well usually depression uh, dishes start piling up house doesn't get clean laundry doesn't get done she doesn't want to get out of bed ever even if you set her on fire uh, medic phase oh, the entire house has been cleaned twice okay shower's been scrubbed She's laundered the, uh, or washed the, uh, shower curtains. Uh, dishes are stacked by size, sorted, categorized. But, you know. What else do I do that's manic? It's hard for me to say. You know, you stay up 14, you sleep 18 hours, you get up, stay 14 hours, don't want to go to sleep. There's, a uh, some of your brilliant ideas is I want to go to bed at 3 so it's 2 and I'm tired so I'm going to drink some coffee. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, the fact that you constantly get up at night and roam until you're having a really bad time. So she gets up every hour or two, gets something out of the fridge, eats it, steals something of mine using my water, empties it, Wakes up another hour later, find out there is no water to drink because she drank it all. Reads the fridge, leaves the water pitcher out on the counter. Doesn't remember any of this the next morning. Doesn't help me at all when I'm thirsty in the middle of the night and I wake up and I want some water. No. Nope. Because there is no water. Nope. No. No. See, it doesn't have like a little thing, but it's a big thing. Especially when she doesn't want anyone touching her. We have two dogs that sleep with us. So I get buried alive under chihuahuas, and I end up sleeping with about that much space on a queen size bed. Because it's her, and this room she determines she needs two dogs, and then whatever's left over. Because I don't want to be touched. I don't want to be touched. Other nights, you need a spatula and some cooking oil to get her off. Very clingy. Not a deck of pain, I don't know if. Like, That's when I'm being manic, when I'm all like super hypersexual. When I'm like wanting to be touched and caressed and you know do whatever like crazy shit. That I and she want. bites. And I bite, but I do that a lot of the time. Um, you see, there's some other things like money wise. <coughs> Let's talk about money and manic behavior. Well, damn! Look at the time. Well, you really want to do this whole world deep, don't you? Yeah, I'm not trying to get you in trouble. <clears throat> I just want people to realize this is kind of things that happen. Um, manic phase. Amazon knows my house really well. The Amazon delivery guy knows my house. Yep. Knows when to knock on the door. I, I can get anywhere from one to twelve packages a day. Um, of varying sizes, containing anything from um, earrings. To food, to um, hey, I need my grocery shopping online. Then that, yeah, I was too 
freaking like if I was a rock star and you'd have to go to the store and just couldn't wear it, which cost me more money, but I was like, Oh I'm cool, I could do this and like for some odd reason it was rationalized in my head that that's what you could do. But I wasn't thinking properly because if I would have thought about it, that would have put me more to debt. But at the time it's a really happy, you know, idea. So you just do it and then later on you go, Oh crap, why am I broke? It's that down spiral as after you come off your mania. Yeah, that's when she comes and tells me that, that, that she needs to borrow money from me. Which has been happening a lot. A lot. I used to not do that. Ever. Mm -mm. So it tells me, you know, how the progression is going, how her beds are working, when she needs to go see the doctor. But then I also, like, um, tell you when I'm cycling, if I can tell that I'm cycling, don't yeah. I tell you? Yeah, I usually already know. He already knows, but I just, for some reason, I feel like I need to tell him. <clears> I'm like, so, I'm like super cycling right now, and it's really crazy. I can't slow down, and this is the best way to describe it. I can't slow down a brain. I can't turn it off. I'm constantly thinking about shit. And the more I start to think about it, the more I'm like, oh, well, this is a really brilliant idea. Fuck Oops, sorry, I'm going to cuss on my blog. Fuck sleep, I'm going to stay up because it's good. It's, it's brilliant. Because I'm a rock star. Yeah, I'm a rock star and yeah. I should drink like three more cups of coffee, even though I need to be up at 11. Um, just to follow through that idea that I'm having. Um, so it's five or six. Um, there are things that we've experienced when I'm going through um, depression or anxiety issues. Like, I will have to tell him, he doesn't require me to do this, but I will have to tell him, look, I'm super anxious right now, um, I don't know what to do about it, I'm trying to control it, I just, I need someone to talk to, and just let me hear your voice so that everything will seem to be okay. Yeah. So spending could be, um, for me, like you said, Amazon, um, I do Thrive, I do a whole bunch of subscription boxes, um, I decide that I want to clean up my nails in every two weeks when I can't afford it, so that I've cut back on that. Um, hair, tattoos. Hair, tattoos. Anything that in my mind at the moment I feel like needs to be done so I can mask what I'm really feeling in my head. Yes. So instead of spending sensibly, she spends frivolously. I spend to excess. And um, sometimes it's okay, and other times I'm like, oh crap, that means I only have 50 bucks in my account, and that's the last of my two weeks, and I really can't make that happen. Yeah. Um, makes, makes for an interesting life. Yeah. But um, I will say, even with all this, uh, she's still less crazy than my first wife. By a lot. Yep. She doesn't throw things at me, which, you know. Let's start talking about your next life. <sighs> we're talking about is our relationship. Yes, and it's wonderful and perfect. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Best one I've ever had. Okay, so, um, yeah, those are a couple things that I do. And um, the sleep thing, I'm really trying to get a hold of that. Fortunately, I've been working like 12, 14 hour days because it's a lull in my work and profession right now. It's the only way I've been able to make money. Um, it's really been making me really tired, which I'm sure you could see, but I also have makeup on, but if I have makeup on, this would be horrible. Um, so, um, another thing when he says that, like, I get obsessed with the whole money thing, the other thing I get obsessed with is, like, the ideas. And, um, let's remember the whole vegan makeup? I was all over that shit. Like, I was, like, researching like a crazy woman watching 15 million YouTube videos, like, that's what you do, like, you dial in on one thing, and that's what, um, at the current state that you're in, is the most important thing in your entire life, and nobody can just hear you from it. Um, so, it's a couple of things, but he recognizes it, and he will, honestly, he'll let me do most of the things that I do, but when he realizes that I need to be reined in, and somebody needs to basically sit down with me and have a come Jesus meeting, he will say, look, honey, I'm, I'm recognizing you're doing these things, so we need to have a talk about it because this is a healthy behavior for you. So it's a, it's a good, positive, supportive relationship. But I think these kind of happen 
this kind of behavior is happening in any type of uh, marriage that has um, a bipolar partner. And if you're able to recognize this, great. And if you're not, maybe these are signs that you should look for. And um, it will probably make your relationship a little healthier. So now, without further ado, let's talk about his bipolar. Because this isn't all about me. Nope. Nope. Yep. Yeah. We're going to. <coughs> because I'm not stopping the video. Okay. So where do you want to go? So tell me. What do you think are some of the behaviors that you go through when you're having, um, you have more depressive parts of bipolar than you do mania. So tell me some of the things that you think that you do and I can tell you what I've seen you doing. Oh, I know, I'm over obsessed with little things. The littlest, littlest things. Just tell me, me, I don't sleep. It, it's rare if I sleep more than two hours in a row. On meds, off meds, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what they give me. It's two hours, that's it. I'm up for at least ten minutes and, and back to bed. It does not make for a good healthy sleeping pattern. Um, when I get really depressed, all I want to do is sleep. Same when I get sick. Basically, um, when I'm really bad, I pretty much the whole world sucks and I hate all of you. And I'm well armed and I know where you live. This is not right. She, 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 she tries to rein me in, um, from, especially uh, people who get up in my face when, when I'm having a good day, a little bad day. I work with the public for a living, so this, I have to put on that other persona at work and deal and be a good, good person and nice. And then you come up and talk to me when I'm not on the clock, away from work. Ask them to take something from me, or can I do something for you? And that's when I have a really hard time. Not chasing me to the parking lot with a knife. He's done that. Case in point, a homeless person will try to come into the car and ask for money, and he will tell them to go away. Now, any rational person will be like, okay, dude, I asked you, and he's like, no, and I walk away, and that's what I should do. However, you know, we live in, you know, like most cities, where there are homeless people. They're really aggressive, and they're super aggressive for some odd reason where we live. And they will stand there and and knock on your door or do where how they want until you eventually give in. Well, he doesn't give in, so the more he tells them no, the more aggravated he gets. And at this point, he's like, all right, if you don't walk away from your, my fucking car, I'm going to cut you. And he takes out a knife, and he's done it. Um, a couple times inside the car, and he said a couple times outside the car. And my fear, and he knows this, my biggest fear is that he is going to do this someday, and somebody is going to hurt one of us because he can rein that aggressive part of himself in because somebody was pushing and pushing and pushing at him. Um, so we talk about it. Um, as far as his depression goes when he's sleeping, I do notice that. I know he's going through it. I'm thinking he's tired sometimes, but no, he's sleeping late. He sleeps before he goes to work at night, and then he will sleep when he comes home, and then he'll sleep some more. And it's usually when I'm working, so I'm thinking, well, he's just really tired because he worked all day. You know, he just doesn't want to deal with the world at that point, and the only thing that makes it better is for him to sleep. Um... Life events really affects him because I'm always one of those, okay, well, it sucks, but we can get through anything kind of people. He's always been one of those people, well, it sucks, but my life's coming to an end kind of people. Um, so I usually at that point try to assure him that, you know, this is these are the positive things that are happening right now, and this is what we can do about it, and this is what we can't, and I try to be rational, you know, rationalize everything so it sounds or at least it feels better so that we kind of turn that depressive state around. <clears throat> I know it's still there, but I personally think that the more positive things you can push towards somebody, the better it will make them feel. Now, um, chocolate is your friend. Chocolate and bacon is really your friend. Now, if, this lab. now, if 
you had something like what's a cancer. And I came up to you and I said, oh, it'll all be better tomorrow. Well, chances are it's not going to be better tomorrow. And I'm just being a jerk by making you try to feel better. And I should let you deal with however you want to deal because that is your, um, that's your coping mechanism. coping mechanism. And however you cope is your choice to cope like that. It's not my place to tell you how you should feel. But being in a relationship and being married with somebody, you're basically their support structure. And with us both being bipolar and us not seeing a therapist at the time, at this time, and we haven't for quite some time, you know, we've had our medications, but that's been through our regular doctors. Um, the only person we have to bounce off those feelings are each other. And that, in, to me, is like um, the best form of therapy that you can get without having to pay for it. Personally, I don't know about most people, but that's how I feel about it. And I, I try to look at it like that way. I could spend thousands of dollars on a therapist, but then in the day, I have to come down to him, and he has to realize I'm not in my best form. And he recognizes it probably, because he sees me on a daily basis, he probably recognizes it more than that therapist does. So who am I going to trust? I'm not saying you shouldn't see a therapist. By all means, if that's what you need in your life and you can afford to see a therapist, go see one. But if you can't, if your partner can provide that kind of structure for you and that love that you need, then that's the type of therapy that you need in your life. Um... So let's talk about your mania. What about it? Tell me what you think. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm messing with my lips a lot. They're dry. Um, tell me what you think some of the behaviors that you do that are probably mania. A mania. Manic. Manic? Yeah. Um. And I'll tell you what I think you do. Do I figure with stuff? The way I get upset about things like this, 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 this here. This is my computer that I never get to use, you see, or touch. If I use it for work. In school. And she has little things on the monitor. Stop touching those. Talk about your mania. Yes, I'm talking about my mania. So, you know, the little... Nuances. Things that you perceive as slight you that it just get on a treadmill and start running around inside of your head. What do you see, honey? So, um, Zach collects things. Okay, that's a bad thing. Okay, hold on. But, I'm not sure how much this is a depressive thing or how much it is a manic thing. Um, you will collect things, and, or you will just, um, not as bad as your dad, but you will kind of hoard. True. I try not to be my dad. Okay. Not as bad. Just trust me. We don't even want to go there. Um, so he, when he had the money, even though he has a thousand of his gaming stuff, he would still come home with more of it. It's like me and yarn. I don't need more yarn. I keep buying it. Like, if somebody else had my yarn, the world would come to an end because that's my yarn. You know, you, you think in your head, like, that's all right. It's like the people whose shit goes on sale and they're like, oh, my God, if I don't get it. It's going to be the last one the universe made. So, like me with yarn, he's like there. that with his gaming stuff, right? That means bad. A little bit. A little bit. It, no, it could be worse. It could be could, worse. It could be worse. It could be worse. But when he was able to do that, I was recognizing that, that he was doing that. Or um, as far as the depression part goes, he would... Um, 
instead of keeping, like, when I'm going through mania, everything's neat and tidy. When he's going through depression, everything's like shoved in wherever the fuck he wants to put it. It's driving me crazy. And, um, he may or may not remember where he put it. Okay? So, you can sometimes recognize that a person. Um, they just, they exhibit signs of somebody who may be a hoarder because they have to, like, own everything. That's being a completist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let's see what else do you do. Well, let's see, this video is two minutes long, how long do you want to to four people? That's boring. Hi, welcome to the extended version of my podcast. <clears throat> I think this is the longest one I've ever made. So, let's talk about what we do in order to help each other. Uh, what trying to give you ground and, and stop you from doing too much crazy stuff. You know, let me get my nose pierced. I did it anyway. Yep. But um, that can be removed. That's gonna hurt. I he really didn't want me to dye my hair some crazy color, and I talked him into it. But she's not cutting her hair. But nope, didn't cut it. No, not really. I'm gonna cut it a little bit. And you didn't cut it. I did cut it. Can you cut it a lot more? What you did? Nope. Um, not want to shave off my head lately. Like shave off my hair. Shave your head? Yeah, that's why I had like a couple manic phases where I wanted my head shaved. Uh, now I'm depressed because I'm not shaving. Normally I'm. It's winter. Yeah, so. It's cold. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rationalizing for you. It's winter. It's cold. I like this fuzzy beard. It's quite nice. Right. Sometimes I rub it in my tiny hands. And I just like to say now this whole glitter beard, beard ornament thing has just gone too That's far. That's not related to what we're talking about. <coughs> Insanity. It's not it's madness. Related. It's not related to what we're talking about. Okay, what else do you keep me grounded? Keep going. Keep it, you know, focused on what you need to do, priorities. Making you go to bed. I don't like the bed thing sometimes. Yeah. I could literally, some days, I could stay up to like 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. Which would probably put me past 24 hours of being up. But I'd probably do it if he'd let me. We won't, we won't touch on We'll leave the refrigerator for a, a later. Later day. Okay, so anyways, what else? Um... You get these, these crazy ideas at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you decide to start, start cooking. I'm hungry. Not, not just a simple snack. I mean, like... An actual meal. A, a fairly engrossing meal that's going to take an hour or two to make. When did I do that? Oh, I don't remember. I thought I was there right there. I don't remember a lot of shit. Is there right there? Huh. Huh. I'll tell you that, where, when I got it. That's funny. Okay, so... What else? You just try to keep her calm and, and rational as possible. And you let me call you if all possible. Yes. And talk communication, to you when I'm driving with my speaker on. That way I'm not touching my phone because I don't have a Bluetooth. Yes, she does. I bought you one, but you lost it. It's in the house somewhere. Somewhere. Anyways, so I will talk to him on the phone when I'm driving sometimes. So because I'm like I'm having almost like almost like a panic attack and I need to talk to someone. So, um, when I have my panic attacks, I just kind of power through them because I've had so many over the years, and it's just especially since you know I don't have the meds for it right now, I have no choice. So, um. Yeah, can I talk? Yeah. And he'll make me talk to him about my problems, even if I don't want to. 
that's the really hard part, because when she doesn't want to talk about something, she doesn't want to talk about something. And he'll push to talk to me, and then I'm at this point now we're screaming at each other. And he tries to talk to me, and I'm like, get out of my face. And then it causes a bigger argument. And the next thing you know, I'm trying to lock myself in the bathroom, and he's trying to, like, push it down, and I'm getting angry because he just won't leave me alone. Okay. I'm not allowed to lock myself in any type of room. There's a reason for that. There's a reason. I will not go into that because that's this video is not about that. But So, um, let's see. What do I do to help you? Buy me ice cream. No, that is not a coping mechanism. Yes, it is. Okay, so buy me frosting in the can. Oh, yeah. Because he's thing for frosting in the can. Straight out of the can. I almost bought you some frosting the other day. Comfort food, coping method. I'm really stressed. Yeah, I have like a big spoon full of frosting right out of the can. So, oh, no. this is what else I do. Mm -hmm. When he wants to sleep a lot, because that's the part of his uh, bipolar that comes out the most is I try to wake him up and spend time with him. Because sleeping that much is not healthy. And so I just try to, you know, talking. It's not healthy. And so I try to figure out what's going on. Sometimes he'll tell me what's going on, and other times he won't. Most of the times he will. He'll be like, I'm just stressed about such and such and such. And now I'll like, say, okay, what can we do? I feel like I'm the problem solver. You know how they always have that one person in a relationship that's all like, all right, what's our solution? Then um, I always, I think I always do that to you, don't I? Mm -hmm. like, what, what, what can we do to solve this problem? Yeah. For the most part. So, um, and then... As far as when he's having those mania problems that I was talking about, I just, I do the same thing he does. Like, I sit down and I go, hey, honey, you don't need such and such thing, or um, this needs to be straightened up because it's really bad. It's driving me fucking nuts. So, um, yeah. So, that's kind of like what's like in our relationship as a bipolar couple. Um, we... Um, do not share the same kind of meds. We are in a different kind of cocktail, if you'd like to call it. Um, we did sit down the other day and do the whole, what do you want game, because, you know, that's one. Um, and I think one of our meds is in the same family. Yes. It's not the same med. No. So, which is, okay. Um, I'm kind of working on some things right now. Um, Life is sort of some curveballs, but we are getting through it, and that's all you can do. So if you have a comment, leave it below. Um, if you are on my Facebook, you can message me if you don't feel um, comfortable leaving it on my Facebook comments. And uh, we'll talk about it, and we'll open up a discussion. And then maybe if there's enough questions and comments, then we will have a revisiting of this kind of thing and um, see where we're at, see where we're at in a month or two and I hope you guys had a great um, Thanksgiving turkey massacre day turkey happy turkey massacre day or as um, I like to call it thank you for stealing our land and um, you know taking everything we had and then later on in life giving us blankets that killed us so yeah let's celebrate that um, have a good one, and if you can't be perfect, just be perfectly well.